What's up YouTube, Mr. Lime SE here, and today I want to talk about Area Level 85. And I want to really discuss the new ones that are coming, and what this actually means for a lot of players. Because I think a lot of people don't fully understand what Area Level 85 is really doing in the game. Um, I have a whole video on all of that really where it's like talking about items and it's talking about TC and and the item levels and all of these pieces. So I won't dive completely completely into that, but I do want to have this discussion overall because I think it's really important. I think a lot of people are like, "Oh, this is going to open up so many new options and everything's going to be new farming and all of this." Uh, and I think it's actually a little bit less of that sort of impact. So first, let's talk about the new zones right here. Um, and here we have all of the immunities that are going to be in them. So Underground Passage Level 2 is now Area Level 85. Stony Tomb Level 1 and 2. Arachnid Lair, Swampy Pit 1, 2, 3. Disused Fane, Ruined Temple, Forgotten Reliquary, Sewers Level 1. Lot of Act 3 got changed there. And then Abaddon, Pit of Acheron, Infernal Pit. These are all those uh, red portals right there. And then Drifter Cavern and Icy Cellar were, I believe they were, what, 83 and 84 before, or something like that, um, and so they've got bumped to 85. So, you can first take a look, of course, at all of the resistances that do exist in them, so you can say something like, oh, you know, the Stony Tomb level 1 and 2 now opens up for fire, right? So fire characters can go in there and farm that. That's something that probably would be decently fun, especially if you get it really close to, like, the Dry Hills Waypoint. You know, it's, like, right across, and it's right there. That could be a fun map to kind of have um, to go there. Additionally, cold can go in there as well. Uh, so that's super nice. Arachnid Lair. You can see a lot of stuff opens up for cold here. Swampy Pit, Arachnid Lair, Stony Tomb. All of that opens up for cold. Um, light, none of it opens up super. But remember with Infinity, that pretty much breaks almost all light immunes. So it probably does open up in a lot of these. Uh, Icy Cellar, you can have the fire go down in there, uh, which is always fun. These these uh, red portals are pretty jammed up with a lot of immunities. So again, we're probably just going to see like light characters that are really going into these would be my guess. Um, because they can probably break those light immunes would be my assumption. And then they should be able to do just fine right there. Um, but... Yeah, first you need Infinity to break those immunities, but like I say, still, it opens up some more fire and some more cold spots, and even a little bit, uh, maybe right here, you know, at the Ruined Temple and Forgotten Reliquary, um, for, you know, a little bit of, uh, maybe like a Poison Necro, you know, and again, Poison Necros have lower resist, so maybe they can go in a couple other of these spaces as well. That's one of those you have to go in and test. But... Let's get back to the point of the video, which is Mr. Lama SC talking about what is area level 85 and why does it matter um, or not matter to many of us. So the thing with an area level 85 is it allows you to find those top tier high end items. These are these TC87 items that you're not going to be finding in other places. Uh, so for instance, this is where, you know, if you go and farm and Dario, if you go and farm Mephisto, even when you kill someone like Diablo, they have a cap on what they're going to be dropping. Even though they have very high levels, right? Mephisto's level like 88 or 90, something like that. Um, probably not 90, probably like 88. And uh, Diablo's 94, I think. And, oh, Mephisto's 87. Okay, regardless. 87, Diablo's like 93, 94. And so you have the, or 96, Whatever it is, even though they have these high levels, they have what's called a treasure class, and this is the base item that they can drop, right? So, for instance, Mephisto can drop Arachnid's Mesh because Arachnid's Mesh has a low treasure class, but a very high level. Pindle, on the other hand, cannot drop Arachnid's Mesh because even though Pindle can, has a very high treasure class, tre treasure class uh his level monster level is just just below what he actually needs to be able to drop that 
right? So the way that items drop is based on the treasure class, which is going to be, you know, the spider web sash, that base item there. Um, or the, you know, uh, sacred armor, the monarch shield, whatever it is. And then the actual level of the character of the monster is going to determine if it can drop it set unique, right? Because those sometimes will have different levels right there. So this is how it, that kind of comes into play when it's rolling for that piece. But if a monster cannot drop a spiderweb sash, no matter what, then it doesn't matter, um, you know, if, I mean, that's a bad example there, because he can, but he can't drop it at the right level. But regardless, um, if a monster can't drop, you know, let's say a monarch shield, then it doesn't matter, uh, you know, if trying to roll it for that unique whatever it is, it doesn't matter what their level is. If they don't have the treasure class to drop that, then it's irrelevant. And so I guess a good example would be Mephisto is level 87, so he has a high enough level to drop something like Tyrael's Might, but he will never drop a Sacred Armor because he doesn't have that in his treasure class where he can drop Sacred Armors. So it just doesn't matter. He's never going to get to that point because he's not going to drop the base first. So all of that to be said and come back to this, area level 85s open up the range for every item to drop. This is really the big piece. You're now going from, you know, something like, oh, Mephisto, who can't drop all the stuff, Diablo can't drop all the items, mobs that were in, you know, the old Drifter Cavern or Icy Cellar had a couple items they couldn't drop. Or if you're farming in, like, the Cold Plains, or if you're out in, you know, Act 2 in the Far Oasis, right? There's a cap on the level, and so not everything is going to be dropped. But the problem is, and why I think this is not going to be as big of a change for a majority of people, most of those items that you will find in those area level 85s, most of those next level items kind of suck. And it's not all of them. So there is still room for improved, improved items and stuff there. But it's things like, ooh, you can find Shadow Dancers. You can find Templar's Might. You can find Tyrael's Might. You can find Mang Song's Lesson, Cranium Basher, the Grandfather, right? There's a ton of these items that you can find out there that are only going to be found, right? These TC-87s, these crazy, ridiculously rare items that are only going to be found out there. But they're just garbage items. They're, they're, they're just all useless. And so it doesn't actually add a lot of good farming for people, right? This is, this is the piece. If you're a grail getter, if you're someone who's looking for every item in the game, this is glorious. All of these changes right here are going to be perfect and amazing because it's like, oh, sweet. Now I have so many more places to go farm and try and, you know, get that Tyrael's Might or whatever it is. But if you don't care about that, if you're just looking for really useful items in the game, you're still probably going back to those same areas that you were before. And the same thing applies with, like, runes. All of these additions right here aren't changing anything for those rune drops that you were really looking for you're still going to want to run the trav and coal you're still going to want to do chaos runs you're still going to want to do cows right like the same places that you went for runes before are still all going to be the best same places for runes again because none of these areas are adding any of that by going up to area level 85, that's not changing it in a way where suddenly, oh, there's going to be tons of jaw rune drops now in, you know, the swampy pit or something. Like, I'm pretty sure you could just find the jaw rune in the swampy pit before. So, you know, it, it doesn't change that in any capacity. All it does is increase the items the, that are going to be at that top end, um, which, once again, can be fun for grailers. And can be fun still online, but I, I believe it's not going to help a lot of players. At the same time, these areas are also going to be more difficult. Area level 85s can be pretty tough, right? So I know a lot of people that they want to get into the ancient tunnels as fast as possible with their cold source because they want to farm their, you know, their gear there and stuff. And it's like they go in and they kind of get bullied around and, you know, it's hard for them and they're dying and, and it's all of this. And they're like, man, I just need to get like strong enough that I can do the ancient tunnels. 
And it's like, you probably don't need to really do a lot of ancient tunnels. You probably, unless you're grailing, like if you're not doing that holy grail, you probably want to spend more of your time farming Mephisto, farming Andario, getting those Shakos, getting, you know, all of the nice items from there, getting your Arachnid Mesh and your Maras and your SOJs and all of this stuff, rather than dump all of your time on these tough areas. Now, a nice thing for the area level 85s is it does give you more experience, right? Because you're going to be killing these, well, higher level monsters, level 85 all the way up to 88 if they're the super or the unique mon mobs in there. Um, so you are going to be getting more experience from that. And it can be a nice kind of step up once you do have all of those base items for your character. But again... It's kind of very much an end game, whatever piece that you can kind of mix in, especially if you're grailing or looking for very specific items. Uh, but overall, I don't think it's going to change a lot of farming, especially a lot of the general online farming that people are going to be doing. Because I think most people are still just going to be like, I'm just going to go back to the chaos or I'm just going to go back to doing trav runs or doing, you know, whatever it is that you've done before. And even for some of the things like the area level 85s that existed, something like the pit is extremely strong. It's such a good area because you get the big pit level 1 and then you have the pit level 2 for added added mobs right there. Um, and it's going to be tough to see some of these compete. Something, for instance, like the underground passage level 2 is almost essentially useless as an area level 85. Because the underground passage level 1 is not an area level 85. Nobody's going to really travel all the way in, travel all the way to the Underground Passage Level 2 just to kill, like, three unique bosses or something, right? You're going to have a much better chance uh, of everything if you instead go to the pit or go to the tunnels or go to whatever it is. I think Stony Tomb definitely has comp uh, definitely adds right there. I think Arachnid Lair will be potentially a fun one because it is right next to the Waypoint, which, which could be really nice. Red Portals, I think, are probably going to be a little bit far and off and with all of the immunities that you have in them maybe not used as much they also have terrible density but they did say they're increasing it a little bit um but we'll see kind of what happens with there uh i don't think in these you're really going to have too many people farming much at all swampy pit might be interesting i'd be curious to go like check it out because level one two three i don't know if i've ever been to level three of the swampy pit before um and then I think Drifter Cavern and Icy Cellar will still compete there, right? Both of these were already fun farming areas a little bit, uh, but now they're at the 85s. But let's finally get into the what you actually can find in here that can be kind of useful, right? So you can find a Wind Force down here. That's going to be one of these higher level items that you're not going to find in your Cold Plains and whatever it is. You can find Death Fathom, which is best in slot, cold, uh, source weapon, amazing item, very rare, but a very, very solid find if you can get that unique dimensional shard to drop. You can find Griffin's Eye, which again, uh, you're going to have in multiple best in slot for multiple builds, so that's going to be really nice. Um, you can find Crown of Ages, not quite as used, but still kind of useful. Uh, so that's something that can be a little bit, you know, added in there. Um, you can find uh, Wisp, though I, I, Wisp should be able to be found kind of in some other areas, but that's, you know, for, for sure you can maybe get a Wisp in there. Um, oh, that's probably most of the useful stuff that you're going to find. And then you're going to find a lot of not useful <laughs> super rare uniques uh and sets you know maybe you, you, you could get those grizz pieces the grizz shield the grizz uh weapon astrians you know all of these that eh, they're okay but you're not really using them that much at all um so like i say it it very much i don't believe it's going to change a lot i think it'll change a lot for me as someone who wants to do grail who wants to move around in these high level areas to find that next materials might and all of that because it's super exciting for me to find it um but it's not going to change the general farmer the person who is 99.9 .9 of people that are playing this game that just are looking for the Shaco, or they just want to maybe one day make uh, an enigma or something like that, right? So I think that's going to be um, 
just something to note because I just see so much hype around the new area level 85s and everybody being like, oh, now I finally can stop farming Mephisto and I've got a new place to farm and all of this. I'm so excited. And I just think, I just want to temper expectations, right? I just want people to realize that it does bring more to the game, which is great. But I don't think it brings as much as everybody is thinking it does um, to the point of it completely changing the end game meta and any of this stuff for the majority of players. So, anyway, with that being said, I'd love to hear uh, your guys' thoughts, how you're feeling about the new area level 85s. I do appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, YouTube, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace, everybody.